That is okay. So I emailed you after you did the segment on uh, Crystal and Sagar talking about the lab leak. Uh, and just generally, um, I think the messaging you have on COVID, from what I've seen, is not great. And I think it kind of backfires on the purpose you're going for, which is to get more people vaccinated and more people to care about it and take it more seriously. Um, and I think you've been a little pro like authoritarian policies, things like that. Well, I am a socialist. So, um, this is true. <laughs> hit me up then. What do you think I've done wrong? Also, um, how do you want to be referred to by chat? Oh, I apologize. Uh, my name is Brett pronouns are they are he, him. And, uh, yeah, that should be fine. So where have, uh, I, where have so I failed we, you? Well, can we clarify? I just I tried to dig through some of your older content, but you don't have a lot of clips specifically. I'd have to dig through old streams. So can I clarify a couple of things so I make sure I yeah, have it correct? It. Okay. Um, you were pro mass mandate, pro lockdown, pro vaccine mandate. Yes. Well, we've never had a vaccine mandate. I mean, some businesses sure. have, but we haven't like sure. as national policy. Yes, to the extent that we had it. Yes. Okay. Um, and from what I've gathered perception wise, anybody who's vaccine hesitant or was against those measures, you tend to consider either idiots or conservatives. Yes. Well, for the most part, I'm sure there are probably some like very specific, um, you know, nuanced disagreements that I wouldn't find that disagreeable, but for the most part, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess the argument I have after watching that Chris on Sagar segment, and I, I found the clip of you talking or going over to Joe Rogan, Sanjay Gupta one as well, is that the way you approach the messaging on this is terrible and it lines up with like, the people that are pro vaccine and pro mask, that it, it's having the opposite effect that you want it to have. Um, and anybody who's at this point vaccine hesitant or, or doesn't buy the mask mandates or the effectiveness of that, it's kind of understandable at this point with how bad the government and media's messaging has been. I, I disagree completely. Um, the, okay. the government media's messaging, honestly, has been pretty great. Um, the problem is that conservative media has like hyper fixated on a couple of irresponsible statements out of hundreds of thousands. Overwhelmingly, the messaging has just been that the vaccines are, are, are good to take, they're helpful, they'll help present, prevent the disease or lessen its symptoms, which is true. Um, and, um, and additionally, that, uh, it, you know, like masks pr limit the spread, which is also true. I, I mean, like, uh, the, the, the body of the message has been consistent and accurate this whole time. I feel like anyone who's still vaccine hesitant is based, like, they're on that, like, anti-science facebook health bullshit you know like I, I don't know how you could even reach a person who isn't vaccinated at this point do you think it's possible to be vaccine hesitant on this one specifically and not anti-science or anti-vaccine in general you'd have to have an extremely good reason i don't think i think you need an extraordinary degree of either deliberate or incidental um scientific ignorance to be anti-vax on this specific issue Okay, and that's honestly not even really what I want to argue with you on, because one, I'm not a virologist, and two, uh, it's not like I've dug through every study and gotten my knowledge base up to a level that would be a responsible place to even argue whether it's effective or not. It seems to be. Um, my concern would be... Um, sorry. Um, just in general, I'm not a fan of mandates or anything medically forcibly being done by anyone um and i know we didn't have them but what i'm saying is the advocacy for wanting them and pushing them as far as they were done and saying things like you can't if you get vaccinated you can't get it and if you do happen to be one of the few breakthrough cases you can't spread it which is just false but it was said at nauseum over and over and over and over again and then walk back when that wasn't the evidence. And it's not even saying they weren't effective or it reduces negative causes. But when the messaging is, this is a perfect vaccine, there's no side effects, there's um, no way you'll get COVID. And if you're one, one in a million, you I, do, I just, you can't spread it. And none of that was true. Yeah, I don't know. Well, because you're, I, I think like you're, you're making it up. That just wasn't the messaging. The idea that there was a, like a, a prevention rate, um, like closer to 95% with the Pfizer, the initial Pfizer vaccine uh, was, was more consistent. And nobody was ever saying you can't get it. 
or can't spread it. Just that it was it was less likely that you'd get it and less likely that you'd spread it. Conservatives latched onto this and they were like, well, the liberal media will tell you that once you're vaccinated, you're immune to all sickness, which is why that to this day, like conservative accounts on Twitter will go viral or it'll be like, huh, notice how this person got COVID even though they've been vaccinated. And it's like, haha, the media lied. Well, it, it didn't like. It, it it just it just didn't do that, you know. I, I don't think you don't think you don't think we could find clips from press secretaries or Matt out or someone on MSNBC or CNN saying if you get vaccinated, you can't spread it. This you is what I this is what clips. I mean by like fixating on an incredibly small minority of the broader statements in a in a pandemic that affects the whole world, um, in a country where there are thousands of people whose job it is to engage in messaging. Any one like errant comment. Any one statement that's a little bit too like flippant or a little overly confident to take that and to then go, well, the media's messaging has been bad when the overwhelming majority of stuff has been consistent and clear. I think like I think that's like the conservative psyop, right? I don't actually think the media has been inconsistent. I think it's been pretty responsible as long as we cut conservative media out of the picture. When I'm talking like liberal media, oh, they're, yeah, liberal I mean, media I, I agree with you. They're insane, conservative media in general. Um, but I think. I, I don't agree with you. Like, I think they've handed conservatives a bunch of wins by doing really stupid shit over and over and over and over again. Like what? Um, so Fauci's flipped on masks, what, three separate times publicly? Um, yeah. Like initially, it was, it was initially, hey, they don't work. And then he openly admitted they do work, but I was trying to limit the purchases so we had enough for frontline workers. And then he flipped to, well, one doesn't really work, but maybe two will work. And then recent comments from them have said, hey, we're not sure of the effect of this net. They may have had some small effect, but they weren't the most important part of the approach. The only thing the there he did that I think was actually kind of dishonest was him downplaying the effectiveness of masks so that frontline workers would have more access to the N95 ones. But apart from sure. that, I don't think anything he said has been out of line with like the scientific understanding of the issue. Um, masks were more helpful early on. Modern strains of COVID are more virulent and easier to spread. So as this, as our understanding of the disease changes, and as the disease itself changes, our like messaging on masks will change as well. Uh, but like, I, I don't think, like, I guess the issue that I have is that any situation that's this like immediate and dire and overwhelming is going to be fraught with a lot of confusion. Um, and there isn't going to be like, it's not like the government has some kind of pre-existing like perfect step-by-step -step formula to addressing this specific disease. Like we find out moment by moment. What can the vaccine do? Like, how effective is all of this? And that this is going to be the case with every pandemic ever. There will never be a pandemic that won't have these things, you know. But it's right. changed and the I, fact that the 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 mandates worked, the the vaccine works, you know. Um, so we should like we should focus on responsibly interpreting the information we get rather than like ultra fixating on mild diversions from what is otherwise a pretty consistently accurate narrative. Okay, but I guess I guess the argument I'm making is that the amount of things you can pull from not random people on the internet, but mainstream news or Fauci or the White House press secretary or Biden or Trump, by the way, Trump was terrible on this as well, of something that was either flippant or incorrect or whatever, and the confidence with which they said it and then had to walk back and or change what they said, and then attacking anybody who questioned them about it gives a really bad image that, hey, we're dictating this from the top. We're not doing this based on the science. We're doing this based on what we think. And if we were wrong, we're not going to admit it. We're not going to change tactic. But we're not going to ever say anything along the lines of, hey, masks seem to be effective. We're still doing studies. If something changes on that, we will update you. Um, oh, hey, N95 seem to work. Cloth masks don't. So, any, ma any mandate that is for a business or a school or whatever that is, you need to wear a cloth mask. That's just performative. The cloth mask didn't do a damn thing. The N95s did the if you wore them correctly. Do but it. hold on. They don't. They do. um, yeah. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull up a study here. On yeah, that. we, we um, had early on, not so much now, but early on, um, if you wore a mask and you had COVID, you were less likely to spread COVID um, to the people around you because a lot of COVID spreads through the droplets, the microscopic droplets that you exhale and it went spit out sure. when you talk. But what the, the, I guess the point I'm making is that could have all been stated, but, and again, we'd have to pull up a study on the cloth mask, but I would argue, unless we pull something up, I'm going to 
stay with, they don't tend to work very well, and, and 95s do, except for people like you and I with large beards and reduce the effectiveness of them significantly. Um, people are, don't know how to wear them correctly, and you heard that from public health official, officials that, hey, people don't know how to wear these correctly. They're not effective if they're not used correctly. Um, all of that. And it just seemed deformative. And then when all, when they changed the messaging on what works from don't so use wait, them, you, use them to you, double in. You say, you say we should respect the science, but the problem is like all of the stuff that you're upset with them for doing was them respecting the scientific process. The moment a pandemic happens, it's like, okay, we need to control the spread. Masks are like a pretty obvious thing that you can do right off the bat to limit the spread of a disease because we know they work historically. They work with a variety of things that spread through respiratory symptoms. Um, so like, it makes sense they would immediately go for that. The problem is like the science does change. Right now, for exa example, with like whatever, God only knows what variant of COVID we're on right now. With the modern variant of COVID, like it, they've gotten viral enough that it seems like masks are less effective. I still think there's some marginal effectiveness. Like if you wear a mask and you have COVID, you're less likely to spread it, but it has definitely decreased in ineffectiveness over time. Which is why masks, uh, mask mandates aren't as common now as they are like uh, two years ago. You know, it seems like generally speaking, the process is being followed. Right. Sure. And that's fine. But the messaging wasn't. It is we are correct right now. Do exactly what we say, and then they lose credibility when the science changes. But it doesn't. Well, no, because they were right. They were correct when they said wear masks to lower the. The, like the transmittability of the disease that was correct of them to say like they they were operating within the existing scientific understanding of the issue and they were saying it authoritatively you can't like dilly dally when it comes to a pandemic like you if if the immediate scientific evidence points towards the efficacy of cloth masks you can't go like ah well they might be effective we need to do like a few months of trialing before we can know for sure they're a basically free like they don't harm anyone. There's not really a downside to wearing the mask. So like obviously, like right off the bat, it's like okay, people, let's go. You know, and they would. Well, um, I mean, there is it. some there is some downsides. There's studies coming out now about them affecting the education of young children. Like um, in in what uh, way? Uh, not being able to read faces, um, making it harder to hear and speak, and things like that. Yeah, uh, I mean, you'd have to weigh that against like getting COVID, I guess. It is unfortunate. Well, it, well if, if we're weighing it against COVID for children specifically, the flu is a lot more dangerous than COVID was for young children specifically. For young children, but the older you get, the less that weighs out favorably. I mean, the flu is very dangerous to young children, and you can still bring COVID back home to your parents and grandparents, which was one of the main concerns. Like, the kids might be okay, but then they come back home and they spread the disease to their parent. Because like, it's not like a parent can quarantine away from their kid. The parent has to take care of the kids, so there's you, you know, there, there's, it puts them at risk as well. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Parents for sure. But you could take measures to protect the more vulnerable, like the elderly and the infirmed, as opposed to forcing three and four year olds to wear masks in schools. That's insane. Well, three and four year olds don't go to school. Well, sorry, five, six, whatever. Preschool, kindergarten, first, second, elementary school and younger. I mean, I guess, like, it's unfortunate that they would have to, but if they did, and it lowered the likelihood of their parents getting sick, wouldn't that be, like, a worthwhile thing to invest in, potentially? Potentially, but I don't know what's your threshold for damage to young children versus risk for adults, et cetera, and there's other things, there's other measures that could be taken to protect yourself as well. Um, like, I, let me ask you this, I'm just out of curiosity, were you early on in the in 2020 prior to vaccines were you advocating vitamin d and quercetin or some sort of iron for you mean with the beginning of covid first year prior to vaccines um no i wasn't advocating for those things i don't think i was aware okay. of their effectiveness in treating covid well something like 44 percent of people with severe reactions to covid were vitamin d deficient something like 80 percent of people in icus were vitamin d deficient and that would be a cheap, easy measure for the government to send out. But there was no application for that. It was, it was lockdowns, masks, et cetera. But you, can, right? you can get vitamin D at your local grocery store, and that doesn't make masks and lockdowns any less effective. Sure, but a clearly effective measure was not advocated for by anybody at a large scale. 
even though we had pretty early evidence that it was helpful. That's well, what I'm talking about. Like when when was it found that vitamin D was effective? Um, I found something from I was looking for this. I remember because the reason I remember so vividly is because I did take this seriously and I was paying attention and I was buying everyone in my family and close friend circle vitamin D and either turmeric or quercetin because that helps with the absorption rate when I'm, you take vitamin I, D. I'm looking at some some studies. This is on COVID. 19 treatment guidelines from the NIH.gov right. saying there's insufficient evidence for the panel to recommend either for or against the use of vitamin D for the prevention or treatment of COVID-19. Hold on. I, I literally had it up and I accidentally closed it. Give me a second. I apologize. I did have it, but I closed it because okay. I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, It's like the ivermectin thing too, where you have to be careful about stuff that you recommend because people will go hog fucking crazy. If you say vitamin D can protect against COVID nineteen, then instantly every CVS in the country will be out of vitamin D, um, because people are going to start hoarding like gallon jugs of it. So I, I I feel like the there's there's generally like an averseness to recommending anything that isn't strictly necessary because it'll cause shortages. Um, which, hey, that's what happened with the masks, because people started, like, buying up so many masks that there weren't enough N95s for frontline healthcare workers, which actually was, well, was okay, a real so issue. That was what I was going to say, was if, if your argument is don't recommend vitamin D because there might be shortages, then why recommend masks if there's going to be shortages? Well, if that's effective as well. Well, for a time, Fauci tried to correct against that. Fauci was like, well, hold on, actually, and, and like, tried to buy some time for the, uh, the uh, essential workers to get a hold of them. Yeah, hold on. I'll get hype at the same time. Apologize. It's okay. um, like even even if I felt the government could have recommended vitamin D more aggressively, and from what I'm from what I'm seeing here, it seems like some people are saying it doesn't do anything, and some people are saying that it does. I would be willing to bet you're probably safer against the threat of death if you aren't vitamin D deficient in general, because vitamin D is good for you. Sure. Um, yeah. but that, that wouldn't like lessen my recommendation for masks, lockdowns, vaccines, whatever else I, I would, I would just recommend all of it like in tandem. Okay. So we'll get there in a second. Um, if, and I did, I do have this number, if 44% of the U S population is vitamin D deficient, right. And vitamin D in general is a good health measure being deficient vitamin D is bad for all sorts of things. But if in I think it's October 2019. Sorry. Um, if I can find the right study I was looking at, um, from what I remember, it was October 27th. Um, that study of like a couple thousand people, that 44% of people in the ICU were vitamin D deficient. And that is a effective measure to be not vitamin D deficient. All you need is 5,000 IUs a day and some sort of absorption. So turmeric, quercetin, et cetera, right? Yeah, well, for, for now, and, for now, because we don't need to do like a study hunt. I'm, I'm okay with like accepting the premise that it would be effective to not okay. be vitamin D deficient. So why, one, why not advocate for that, and why close the beaches and the parks and all of that kind of shit when we knew early in COVID and we did know this outdoor transmission was not a thing. So why are we closing beaches? Why are we resting paddle porters? Outdoor, why are we closing parks? Well, wait, hold on. You advocate for following the scientific process, but right away we didn't know that outdoor transmission wasn't really a thing. I remember it took a while before it was generally determined that the likelihood of transmission outdoors way, 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 way lower than, than indoors. Um, it was just a broad set of rules about preventing people from gathering in, in crowds, you know? Um, I think it's okay to lean towards the side of caution. Like, COVID's still going, but we we have reopened our pubs and our, our beaches, you know? I, I think it's okay, like, the moment things get started. It's like, all right, let's let's be as cautious as possible. And then as we determine what is effective and what is needed, we scale things back, which is what most countries did. Um, I think we could have gone a lot farther, frankly, though there's no point now. Okay, so let's jump to that then. What's your threshold for that kind of measure, for a lockdown, for a mandate, for a vaccine mandate, even at the corporate level, for um, filling stand in the state park? What's your threshold for an infection to see where that's acceptable versus not? Wait, that what's acceptable? That those kind of measures, like limiting people's freedom, locking down masks, vaccines, et cetera, advocating for policies that do limit your freedom. And they do. You well, can say that they're the right choice, but what's your threshold for that? I don't necessarily think they limit our freedom. I think that there's a kind of freedom to a, a society that does not have COVID-19 in it. 
So a pursuit of that society, even if it means temporarily limiting rights, might actually be an enhancer to your freedom in the long run. But, um, I mean, there are like a lot of things there, right? Um, we never did a federal mandate on vaccines, uh, which is unfortunate because it would have made a lot of people I dislike very upset. We did have the <laughs> workplace requirements. Those workplace requirements, by the way, were 100% like earned and legitimate. Um, if you are not vaccinated, you were, especially back then, like when things were less transmittable generally, um, you were a threat to your workplace. You literally posed a threat of injury and death to the people around you, more so than if you were vaccinated. And like, I think that a workplace has every right to can somebody if they don't abide by that. Like that's, that's totally fine. If I like ran a building and I had like a hundred people working there and some of them were old and infirm and sick. And then like, there's this one guy who strolls in. He's like, yep. Not getting vaxxed. No Fauci ouchie for me. Like, nah, f that guy. Um, so I think that's fine. Um, as for okay, like so, uh, closing public venue. Uh, oh, yeah. Along those lines, though. So this is, and this is going to be anecdotal, so I apologize. But mm -hmm. something that happened to me and my family. I was in Florida at the time. I live in Colorado now. But um, I was laid off twice. And not from, like, I had a career. I'm a builder. Like, I was laid off twice during that. So was my father. So was my sister. All in relatively in the building industry. Um, and I got a job with a much larger corporation after that because I thought it was safer, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I tested positive for COVID in, what was it, April of 2020. Um, it seems to be that national immunity is a pretty good protection for, I don't know, what, 10 months or something like that is what the most recent stuff says. Well, first of all, it took us a while to arrive at any conclusions with regards to... Um the immunity that you get from contracting it. For a while, we weren't even sure if you could get COVID twice. Obviously, now we know you can get it an infinite number of times, basically. Um, right. But, but as so, for, okay, something like, you said... Natural immunity right. might also protect you, but that's not the same as protecting other people. A higher... Like, having recently had COVID means that your body is charged with more antibodies against it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your body is less likely to... Um, to, to uh, uh, um, transmit the disease if you're a carrier but not currently infected by it. Um, like okay. the, and the science so, on this takes a really long time to find out that kind of stuff because you're not dealing sure. with like clinically controlled lab tests. Like that's not something you can know right away, I don't think. So fine, I'll, I'll accept that premise. But something you said at the beginning of our conversation was, hey, it's a pandemic, it's complicated, it takes a while to figure out things. Part of the reason we went with masks is because we had prior um, evidence from prior diseases, SARS, MERS, et cetera, things in Asia where they wear masks more consistently. We have prior evidence that shows that typically with respiratory viruses, masks are an effective measure to help prevent it, correct? You, you said that. So that's one of the reasons we advocated for them so strongly. Yeah, well, you, you look at what's been done in the past and you think like, okay, sure, okay. here's an easy one right off the top of the dome. Great, fine. Natural immunity is generally a pretty good defender once you've had something and catching it again, at least for a while. Is that, is that pretty established science for most things long-term? I mean, it does depend on the disease. I'm pretty sure that varies a lot. But even then, like, if we're talking about a business and their criteria for maintaining employment, um, I think it's fair to go like, all right, everyone, you have to get the vaccine. You can't be like, oh, I didn't get it, but I don't need to get it because like, look, I've had COVID. I don't, like, I think it's okay for them to have just like a general rule, you know? Well, I, I, the way I see the world, I don't want any... I basically don't want businesses to be told what to do on their own policies in general. It's the same argument with like um, Twitter policy or Instagram policy. Like they can make their own policy. If you don't like it, that sucks, but whatever. But they go, go somewhere else or work somewhere else. They but, what? They chose to do it. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm not advocating that they shouldn't be allowed. To, I, I, I wouldn't want the government to come say, hey, no, no vaccine, no vaccine requirements for work. Like I don't want to do that. What I am saying is I don't think it was good policy for those companies or the policy for people. I, I wouldn't advocate for it publicly. Like I, like, I think that's one, I think it opens the door for companies to enforce all sorts of medical things on their employees, which I don't think that's good. They can do it if they want, but I don't think that's good. And I don't think you should advocate for it. And I think it pushed a lot of people the other direction. Why, it's can't, like, why can't they just get vaccinated? What percent of the population do you think is going to get vaccinated in general. A percent of the population takes flu shots. Like, how many people did you realistically think best case scenario in this country were getting vaccinated? I mean, there are other countries where it's, like, near 100%. Over here in oh, America, honestly. like, it's been way harder to get more people on board. 
Um, I think sure. right now it's probably closer to like three quarters, but the holdouts are never going to move over without some kind of like federal mandate. Okay. Do you think that percentage would have been that high? Or do you think it would have been that many holdouts if there weren't all these instances of the being able to weaponize bad messaging, bad policy, things like that, that well, you can you always can say it's dumb. You, can, you could always huh? do that. Well, the problem is if you, if there's like a massive right wing propaganda machine that's choosing to weaponize this information in bad faith there's nothing you can do to prevent that i don't i don't think that not having these mandates would have stopped anything i don't i so I, i'm gonna take like the hard determinist stance here i don't think anything that anybody could have done would have prevented there from being this like quarter of the population that's a holdout specifically because the right wing was already primed to turn this into a culture war issue no matter what happened okay I so I'm just gonna use an anecdote. But, but like, why so why like can't why can't they just get the vaccine though? Why can't we just why can't we just get it? it doesn't hurt. I mean, it, it makes your arm sore a little bit, but it's... well, it's, 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 I was the you can say it makes your arm sore. The sickest I've been in a decade was from the vaccine. No, I'm not saying it was a bad thing. I'm just saying the sickest that I have been in ten years was from that. Yeah, but overwhelmingly, uh, you you have to know that like the vaccine is a good thing to take. I mean, you're not you're not contesting the validity of the vaccine, are you, on a fundamental level? No, no, I think it's, science is incredible, and we've had amazing results with vaccines throughout history. We should push to be able to vaccinate as many things as possible. Um, and I think messaging, like, if you question the science, you're questioning Anthony Fauci, or if you question Anthony Fauci, you're questioning the science, or um, there's, we already know that these are safe long-term, 100% positive. We know that as the public messaging, I think in the long run, we'll, we'll contribute wait, wait, to more Wait, wait, what people. was the latter bit there? Um, that we know they're safe long term, like over the next five, ten years. I'm not saying they're not. What I'm saying is that messaging you can't know that. You literally cannot know that. So I, don't say that. I mean, I think the messaging was just that there's no evidence to suggest that they're going to be damaging long term. I, I don't. There I don't know be, if I ever saw anyone saying like, "Yeah, guaranteed safe forever." I did, and I can't. I, I'm not going to be able to dig through CNN clips and Fauci clips and whatever, but. If we're both just saying that we saw, I, I, think, I promise I, you I saw that on a regular basis early on. I, I think that <laughs> there was a lot of defending mRNA vaccines long term. Because early on in the pandemic, a lot of people were attacking mRNA vaccines specifically because it's a new method of developing vaccines. So I think there was an argument that mRNA vaccines are definitely safe long term. There's nothing magical about that production process. That means that over time, it'll be more damaging to your health. Um, but... As for the COVID vaccine itself, I mean, obviously we, we don't even really fully know the long-term effects of, of COVID because. I agree. And, but that's the thing, the messaging on that is correct. We don't know the long-term effects of it, but the messaging and I'm, you're good. You can disagree with me all you want, but the messaging I saw quite a bit, especially early on in the vaccine push was these are safe long-term. We know that hundred percent and they can't, they literally, they just literally can't. And but so. The, you also the, said the that the people... messaging was saying they were 100% effective, which I, I know isn't true. So I don't know if I can trust your memory on what messaging they were using. I mean, the only way we would settle on this is if we started digging through clips and stuff, which I don't think either of us want to do. Um, we can, but um, just the, the confidence in the statements, not from scientists. If you listen to actual virologists and stuff talk, they're much more careful. But from... And again, I don't have, I couldn't find too much from you early on, but from people in your position, large subscriber bases, mainstream media, the White House press secretary, places like that, where they're not virologists either, the confidence with which they said things over and over and over again, and then had to change the messaging, I think was long-term a negative thing. Like the, the example I, I can use is like my father, who is not, he's conservative, but he's not an insane conservative. And I pushed pretty hard for him to get vaccinated when they came out. And I've spoken to him recently. And the kind of stuff I'm talking about has entirely pushed him into regretting getting that. He's 65 years old. I'm very glad he got it. Um, but now he regrets getting it. And that's conservatives are just as responsible for that. But well, they're, they're entirely responsible for that because the only reason he could be led to that position would be if he was lied to. There's no, nothing has happened on the part of Fauci or the CDC or the pharmaceutical companies that would lead a person to regret getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Nothing. No, no information has come out. Nothing truthful 
that would make one regret their decision there. Only lies could. Sure. But what I'm saying is they, the, the other side of this has done themselves no favors because it's easy to find someone saying something in a position of power that's really fucking stupid. And it's really easy to find people like you criticizing anybody who's concerned about it like they're an idiot or a conservative. Well, and that's not a way to bring someone to your side. Okay, I, I understand that to an extent, but the problem is I don't think it's possible to reach these people. Have you seen what the anti-vax, like, hysteria on the right looks like? Logical arguments aren't really up for grabs here. It, it is impossible for there to be a pandemic where there isn't, like, a flurry of confusion and, like, statements change and science changes and our understanding updates. Because it's not science that we're really following when we listen to Fauci, right? It's scientific policy. And policy is political. And political, like, transcriptions of scientific knowledge always carry a kind of, like, cost-benefit analysis associated, right? So, like, for example, we can say, hey, the COVID vaccine is safe, which it is, but it's not perfectly safe, right? The COVID vaccine does have side effects. It's just the side effects are a lot less significant and less likely to appear than the effects of getting COVID. So it's like you can't have a, a scientific official go up and say, like, hey, research has shown that there is a 95 plus or minus 0.3% chance that the symptoms you receive from a COVID vaccine over a two week period will be less severe and less numerous than that which you get like instantly, like the, the public is gone. So you have to use statements that carry as much meaningful truth as possible, um, you know, in, in ways that people actually like get them. And I think like overwhelmingly, like over, over, overwhelmingly, the messaging was consistent and good from, from our policymakers, from people like Dr. Fauci. Um, and it's just been nothing but vitriol and lies from the right. And in an environment like that, there's just, I don't think it's possible to get everyone without like state force, which I'm willing to enact for something like this. Um, though at this point- well, And that was, another, that was another question that we never, I never really got your answer on that. Um, what's your threshold for state force in something like this? If we have a bad flu season, do we do this? Uh, yeah, if it was like a really, really bad flu season that could have like contaminated the planet, then yeah. Um, but we, we've had flu seasons where 60,000 people have died. Yeah, but COVID killed far more people than that. And sure, infected... so, but where, where's the line then? Well, we just know that the flu isn't that serious of a condition. I mean, it's serious, but it's not as serious as COVID. It wasn't, it's not like considered a pandemic. We have flu seasons, but COVID is now this permanent, ongoing maybe like an irremovable force no it's for sure it's 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 an endemic now it's probably not even a pandemic anymore it's it's it here yeah but it's right? it's not it's not like it's i've never gotten the flu in my life but anyone everyone can get covid if they're just a little bit unlucky going outside um it's like still and it seems like it's always going to be that way uh people are still getting sick like all the time everywhere not as much as we used to admittedly um you know we have vaccines but it's like, it's a pretty big problem. At this point, I don't think there's a point in, like, state-enforced mandates or, or, or lockdowns, because it seems like the way COVID has evolved means those wouldn't be that effective. But earlier on in COVID's life cycle, it seemed for a time like there could have been some value in trying to, like, nix it completely. Um, and I think that would have been worth pursuing. Did any country successfully do that? Anybody? No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked, but I still think we should have done it because we have to follow like the, we, we have to follow the process, not the results. In retrospect, we know what the results were, but at the time, process wise, there was a chance, it seemed based on the evidence we had that we could have eliminated it. Um, and I mean, obviously it didn't work out that way, but. Okay. So again, so that's, and that's part of what I'm concerned with all this is if there's a new pandemic, new respiratory virus tomorrow in Chile or in France, do we do the same things? Sure, yeah. Hopefully, we do a better job this time. One of but the they didn't work. Even, even like... countries that locked down hard didn't didn't pull it off. And if we're still having four hundred deaths a day, why are we not advocating for a bunch of this stuff still? What's the difference? Because the way COVID has mutated makes it seem as though those things wouldn't be effective. COVID, the modern strains of COVID, if I understand correctly, are like very viral and less severe on average. We've also gotten a lot better with COVID um, vaccine accessibility. We're a little bit better at knowing how to treat it. Um, we have a better distribution of ventilators so that hospitals can better like take care of big waves of people. Um, it like 
it's not that the disease has gone away. It's just like the conditions have changed to the point where it's no longer possible or desirable to bring about like those effects. But if some big new pandemic disease came along that was like really dangerous and it seemed like it could be cut out entirely, then I would say, yeah, go for it. There were countries that had very, very low death counts, like New Zealand, because they were effective at, at shutting things down. Of course, New Zealand's a lot smaller than the US, but we're also a lot wealthier than they are. So I think something better could have been done. Sure, but if you're going to use smaller countries that did things differently, Sweden did things differently than we did, and their death rates were relatively low for Europe. Well, sure, yeah. I'm, I mean, there, there's a but number of ways you can address this. But you would have had to advocate for lockdowns, and they didn't do that over there. They did social distancing and courage, but nothing was enforced. Um, well, yeah, so why not force it and make it better? Because I don't think force is ever an acceptable, like government force is almost never acceptable. Like that, and I think it ends up backfiring in the long run. I think you're going to have a bunch of people that would that are not going to get their kids the childhood vaccine schedule that would have done before. I think you've got a lot of people who don't trust the medical system anymore. I think you've got a lot of people who don't trust the government anymore. Well, though, well, a lot you, should, you shouldn't trust the government, but not for these reasons. And for people who don't trust the medical system, they're just kind of retarded. They're wrong on this. Um, we, if we, trust me, if we let all of our public policy be dictated by the paranoia of the stupidest subsection of the population, we would have all died by now. Um, like if we, like but, but, following but like the Spanish flu, if we, if we were like, okay, well we have our science, but we need to like tailor our public policy so that the most lunatic, like, um, revengeist Christians in the United States get their way. Like we would, we would all be dead. So we, we, we need to per like persist in spite of some people, unfortunately. Well, th that's kind of what I mean. That, that's what I have a problem, man. You're, you're putting everybody who disagrees with you on this in the box of conservative, Christian, whatever. First of all, you know there's a large contingent of hippy-dippy left-wing people who are anti-vax as well and super anti-science. Like, that's not a small population of left-wing people who are yeah, in a very I, similar I camp. people on the left retarded. I mean, it's I'm not biased in, in that respect, right? No, I mean, a little bit. That's okay. I, we, we, we agree on conservatives being super dumb. Like, that's not a point of contention. But think like, okay, you've kind of brushed past this. I've tried to say it a couple of times. You don't think the, if you question Anthony Fauci, you're questioning science with terrible messaging and something that Fox News can play over and over and over and over again to make people feel concerned. Well, it's, it's true. He, he was our scientific advocate on this issue. He was the guy and people were questioning science and continue to all the time. Like that, that's true though. Um, masks do reduce the likelihood of spreading the disease. The vaccine does help and isn't changing your DNA or hurting you. Like, it sounds arrogant, but like, that's literally the man's job, right? Like, the, he's literally the guy, or I guess like was, I mean, he's probably not gonna preside over another pandemic because he's a million years old, but like, that is his job. This is the one thing that he's supposed to do. And he did it, and he didn't do perfectly, but overwhelmingly, like, yeah, questioning him is questioning the science. I mean, that is it, is it absurd not? to me, man? Yeah, yeah, it it seems absurd. Well, how? Like, but would you? He's a scientist. Would you? Would you? Sure, but there was plenty of scientists, and you're going to say they're crackpots. But there was plenty of scientists that disagreed with him at varying levels of this, whether it was on the lab leak, whether it was on masks, whether it was on vaccines, whether it was on lockdowns, whether it was on the virality of the Omicron variant versus the Delta variant, like. Well, people disagreed with him regularly that were scientists. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's how science works. It's a collaborative process. It's a discourse. There will always be people who disagree. There are even people, there are even like climate scientists who disagree on climate change. They're dumb, but they exist, right? Like, um, it, <laughs> yeah. doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, overwhelmingly you still have to arrive at a consensus, especially if you're trying to enforce policy. I mean, if, if, right. if you want to do policy, you can't do, you can't do this like, well, people are, you know, up in the air on it. Because people are up in the air on everything. People still debate ev evolution, right? Like, we, you, you have to settle on the most probable, um, set of solutions and you have to stick to it because otherwise you, you can't get anything done sure but I, I i would say that the best policy for all of this would have been get as much good information out there as you can do not over exaggerate do not mandate anything because especially in this country that doesn't work people of all countries in the world that's we're the least likely to tolerate that and you know that's true how do you how um, do you know the mandate didn't work um, what if a lot of people just got said, the vaccine so they could keep their jobs? I mean, I did, right? Hey, um, look at that. Yeah, and I'm very unhappy about that. Not because I got it, but I don't like being forced into medical procedures. And I don't, well, I, I guess something you still have an answer for me. That's okay. What other, con 
what other context would you be okay with that? Where's your threshold for forcing things like this? What are you okay with? What are you not okay with? I'm okay with the exercise of state power to protect public health. Um, obviously, there has to be a line. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate like deploying paratroopers to like quickly black bag a elementary schooler who sneezed on a public water fountain. I mean, obviously, at a point we're kind of you know not actually doing anything good. But when it comes to like massive unprecedented pandemics that sweep the world in seemingly no time at all um i mean yeah i i think you can go pretty hard with the protections there and i have like very little sympathy for the anti-vaxxers because i mean i I kind of hate them like borderline like i don't even care like how the, how they end up health wise after the end of the pandemic because they're kind of like evolutionary dredges you know in in a system where as much truth it, like never before has information been as readily available, right? Like, you don't have to trust Fauci. If you want to, you can go actually doing research on this stuff. Um, while the specific process for the preparation of COVID-19, like mRNA vaccines from Pfizer or whatever, you can't just like recreate or test that, of course. But but in terms of the availability of scientific data, we're swamped with it. Um, but it seems like so many of the people who say like, well, I don't trust the vaccine, do your own research. The research they mean is like Joe Rogan episodes. And like, they hold us all back and, and they and they do not just if they're like choosing to worsen their own health but they worsen the health of the people around them they hurt the economy they like man they make going outside not fun anymore like legit um i'm sure a lot of people maybe you felt this way you've been in florida you know i'm sorry uh, or a lot of people in chat as well but like it's you can feel it when you go to a venue that has a lot of like maskless chud looking dudes, you know, for a fact, most of them haven't been vaxxed and you know, your likelihood of getting sick there is a lot higher. Me when I go to the gun range and like f these people, like get the f vaccine. You don't, you're not, you, you, you haven't been told by your doctor, you're going to get an adverse reaction to the vaccine. You don't see your doctor. Um, f you <laughs> get the f vaccine. It's free. It is a, it's a medical miracle. You know, I, I hate them. I do. Um, and that's why I want the state to black bag them. Okay. Uh, but you still haven't answered the question. Where's your threshold for this stuff being acceptable, right? So COVID, sure. But where do you take this power away from the state? When does it become unacceptable? Is it 10% less? Is it 5% less? Is it 50% less? I mean, I think if something is being declared medically to be a pandemic, I feel like that's a good line to draw. Um, when, it, when it comes to the, the uh, extent of like the state power that you would throw out there. I don't know like what exactly like I don't I don't know what exact level of mandate I think is acceptable. I don't think it's possible to draw a hard line like where should you think the taxes would be exactly 30%? Well, okay, what about 30.2%? I I mean, I don't know. Um I can ballpark it. I think we could have gone a lot harder. I don't think we should have gone as hard as China. I think that China did a lot of damage with the approach they took. I think that it's it, it is acceptable for us to um strongly encourage people to get vaccinated and to um, to, to limit the extent of public uh, mobility significantly if it means quelling transmission of the virus. Okay, what about Australia? Was that an acceptable level? What'd they do there? Um, well, the, they're really hard border lockdowns, but the thing I had a problem with the most was the showing up in people's houses and taking them to in camps. Yeah, they might have had food and been treated okay, but in, in a free democratic country you should never be picking people up and taking them to camps it's not an acceptable thing to do um australia police arrest quarantine escapees the trio fled to a remote camp inside australia's COVID internment camp let me see from r w r a l let's check that out australian quarantine facility is not a concentration camp thank you for letting me know um know not, that. not an internment camp okay when asked for clarification johnson's office told a milwaukee journal sentinel reporter he was referring to a COVID 19 quarantine site in australia that requires residents returning from international travel to stay for oh wait this is this is that like buffer thing where if you come back from international travel you have to like stay in a hotel for two days or two weeks um i'm not talking about the hotel ones i'm talking about the like white buildings um border enforcement's one thing but i'm talking about like, hey, you had contact tracing. You're gonna go to this little white building, and you're gonna stay inside or on the patio of it for two weeks, and you have no choice in the matter. Um, and this was just anyone who got who got sick. 
I mean, I don't think it was anyone. I, I think they I mean, obviously missed people. I think it was contract tracing. Um, let me find it here. Okay. Because I'm seeing these, I'm seeing large quarantine villages specifically for international travel. I'm not seeing any of them for just people having COVID. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to see. I'm I'm seeing stuff from China, and and I know China does have extremely stringent COVID right. quarantine facility procedures. Human rights. Australian women kept in COVID camp. Okay, hold on. Human rights in Australia are being brought to the forefront again after a young Australian woman was taken from her family home. Oh, here we go. Okay, this has to refer to the thing you're talking about. By police to a COVID internment camp. Um, see no bus. Uh, ever even. Wait, only to find herself isolated and locked in a COVID internment camp without even having the virus. Um, why? What source is this? Charity Today. That sounds super reputable. <laughs> yeah. Um. I f I feel like I would need to. Okay. Yeah. It says right here, Australia's quarantine facilities are for travelers, not for isolating unvaccinated people. Was was this because? Okay. Did she come back from international travel and then head back to her home? I don't. Uh... Wait. She, she, she said it all again. began. I'm reading the same article you are, yeah. She recounts right. how investigators came to her home shortly after his having run the number plate on her scooter to identify her as a close contact. So it's contact tracing. Test me for COVID. What's happened? No, wait. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe this. So the, by contract, by contact tracing, they mean like kidnapping her and putting her in a camp? Like you were near a person who got COVID? There has to be another reason. There doesn't have to be, man. I mean, you, it could be bullshit, but I remember quite a few videos during the time, 2020, early 2021, of people in those facilities without the right to leave, which I don't like it for travel. Like I'm still against that as well, but it's a little more justifiable from travel. And if it's the hotels, whatever, but. I, I think it's, um, I think it's just fine for travel. Like the, 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 the process of like checking and detaining travelers to your country during times of sickness is literally the oldest form of quarantine we have i think like that shit was being done back during like the black plague i i oh inside australia's covid internment camp this also so th that that one it's source this was also this one woman i think this story right here is bullshit two million views this is like the perfect fake story or maybe it was like a clerical error or something like that but policy wise it seems like these facilities were built for people who just came back from international travel, which seems fine to me. I guess. I don't know. Um, maybe. Regardless, I guess. So China, no. Travel camps, fine. America, locked in harder, kind of your position, yeah? Yeah, if a person travels internationally, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with putting them in containment for like a week or something to see if they get sick. Or, you know, I mean, if you're trying to keep sick people from entering the country and immediately coughing on everyone that seems like pretty okay okay i guess generally my entire problem with a lot of this stuff is i don't i don't like ever giving the government power to restrict this kind of freedom and and saying things like what we did in the black plague historical examples of quarantine like it might be good to do now but saying We've done this for hundreds of years isn't exactly a good argument no, for I'm, why we should well, continue to do something. Well, we do it because it's effective, right? Like the, the reason we, we want to prevent people from other countries from entering with their sickness is because that's literally like the main way you keep sickness from spreading in your country. Um, we already have systems for control and processing at our borders because that's the nature of the nation state. So as long as we have those checkpoints, it seems worthwhile to like use those as natural barriers for the disease. I mean, this, this is why... Um, uh, what, what's what's Plague Inc. is so difficult with Madagascar, right? Because once a country closes off its airports and its docks, it's really difficult to get the, the disease in, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, hold on one second here. Um, yeah. So I guess, I guess what I'm tr trying to get at is I understand the thought process behind 
like lockdowns and mandates and all of those things and et cetera, they don't appear to have worked very well. And I don't love giving the authority to a government that proves repeatedly that it can't like be trusted with increased power, the justification to do that again. And the, the, the what we we're talking about earlier, Fauci is the science that wasn't a bad thing. I, I'm not talking about crackpot kooks. You can find scientists who disagreed with him on all sorts of things. But, but if like, it was against CDC, okay, well, but, hold on, hold on. But, if it, but, okay. but if it was against CDC policy or if it was against NIH, then you got a little thing on your YouTube, on your Instagram that says this person's full of shit. And it, I, we're not talking about a Joe Rogan episode. We're talking about like, hey, there, here's this scientist at Stanford that isn't super fond of the mRNA vaccines, or here's a scientist at John Hopkins that doesn't like the mask mandates. Okay, wait, 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 you're, wait you're, doing, you're doing the thing right now. So yeah, a lot of these people really were full of shit. And you weren't, you weren't flagged on YouTube for being critical of the mask mandates. It was specifically COVID disinfo. So lying about the vaccine or about the disease itself. Um, critiques of policy were not getting people flagged. Everyone who mentioned COVID-19 was getting the little blurb underneath their YouTube video, but that was because YouTube wanted to attach like a, a little nugget of truth just in case the video was stupid bullshit. Um, but like in terms of the, the, like the, the COVID-19 like censorship disinfo shit, that wasn't just anyone who questioned the narrative or whatever. That was about people who were lying. Um, and like you say, like the mRNA vaccine, who's questioning the mRNA vaccine? Are you talking about that one guy who said that he was critical in its production process from like 20 years ago? And it turns out he was completely full of shit. Are we talking about like Brett, about Brett Weinstein, who was saying that he's like, no, are you talking about, are you talking about, what's his name? Malone, I think. I think it's fine. There were like 50 million people who made their careers lying about COVID, you know, <laughs> yeah. there were. What I'm saying is like, the point I'm making isn't about any specific doctor. I'm just saying. But then, like, who was unfairly shafted? Because I'm okay with these people getting smacked down. Like, the, they're literally killing people. Like, they're going on and they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars to tell their audience of retards, like, yeah, don't wear masks and don't get the vaccines. And they're killing people. As far as I'm concerned, they're murdering them. Morally, I don't hold them any less accountable than if they'd shot them themselves. They're making money off killing people, lying deliberately. A lot of them deliberately lying. They're right wing propagandists. They're not all like 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 that person who who used to work like for 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 Greenpeace or whatever, who now spends his time lying about um, climate change. Like they know they're lying. They're making money off of it. So I, I don't care. Like, I have no idea who you're talking about. Sorry, there's, there's a lot of like lying fake scientists. So I it I don't I don't care if YouTube smacks them down. Right. Like. And then people are like, oh, well, couldn't YouTube smack anyone down? Well, first of all, yes, it's their website. They can with their TOS policy. But also, this is a pretty unprecedented thing. It's like it's a massive pandemic. And then you have this like cottage industry of grifters who spring up to start lying, very obviously lying about COVID. Like, doesn't something have to be done about that? Literally, like, I'm not a free speech extremist here. If the consequence of free speech, in this case, meaning YouTube not having a terms of service agreement, but if the consequence of free speech means like, hundreds of thousands more people die and the pandemic ravages unchecked then like f it dude yeah okay in the same way that like you know we have we we don't have free speech protections for people who engage in harassment or death threats technically death threats are speech but we decided they're not free speech because the consequences of letting people just running around making death threats was a lot worse than the consequences of the state not protecting that behavior okay i mean i i don't know if we're going to agree on like the level to which free speech is but i, I, I mean do you think like, people should be your, able I, I to like willy-nilly death threat i mean isn't it probably no, a good... I, no. yeah uh, but that but is the I state think... censoring like, like you you can be arrested for that like you can go to jail for years and years and years right. because you said and i think that. i i think i think threats of violence are pretty much my threshold on speech like yeah there's a lot of dumb shit people say but there's a lot of, like, forget, take COVID out of it. There's been a lot of scientific advancement from people who have been outside of the mainstream on whatever was the hegemonic view in the scientific community. And if they had the ability to shut those people up, we wouldn't have gotten along. No, 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 there, no, no, right? no, 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 that's bullshit. We're not talking about scientific critique of the mainstream through rigorous research. We're talking about YouTubers making a living, going on podcasts to lie, provably lie, about an existing and medically necessary 
scientific like no you can't you can't group all these people in together you can't do this like ah well the catholic church wanted to kill galileo in response to like joe rogan and brett weinstein jerking themselves off over ivermectin you can't we there we have to like we have to distinguish between useful speech and not useful speech in this context because otherwise curtailing any of it is seen as an attack against all of it, when in reality the only reason the messaging from the CDC changed is because scientific inquiry is still alive and well. When you complain about Fauci changing his messaging, but what you're looking at is a process of scientific discovery and correction that's been going on for years now. Um, it's not like it's not like scientists who work for like Pfizer who come out with studies are being like censored because um, because it contradicts the narrative. Like on the back end of things, the real scientists are still doing lots of work. The problem is like on the front end of things, a lot of people are making a lot of money. That this okay, so that's that's a really good way of separating them. Okay, real scientists do not make extra sources of income from their like political podcasts or 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 like Substacks. That's not really a thing. People who actually advance their fields in like um, virology or biology or whatever are in that grind set shit. They are not media trained. They are not like like public facing. You know, we're gonna unveil the truth, whatever. And they certainly don't talk about like the results of their ongoing research. They just do their research, publish it. It's slow. It's frustrating, but they're busy. You know. Sorry, I'm like totally rambling right now, but like it's just. Oh, I just, you're okay. Yeah, I, it's just. Yeah, I, I don't know. Something has to be done about that because, like, obviously, if we let all information run through the exact same filter and the bullshit and the real info is held to the same standard, we get the problem we have right now, which is not everyone can vaccinate it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do take your point on that. Like, I understand where you're coming from. I just, I have a hard time with any curtail, like, the way it appeared to someone who's not in policy or in science from the outside and someone who's not anti-science or conservative or whatever is just anything that contradicted any part of the policy was shut down immediately. You couldn't question it. And that's, that's what started my email to you in the first place was the lab leak shit. And they handled that terribly. And it seems to be that it's most likely that it's from the lab. Right. And I mean, you're going to do the, the, the FBI saw said, any of this thing, but the FBI I, we can find said, articles of the, the lab leaks a dangerous dangerous conspiracy theory well it is it, well, okay so first of all something can be true but initially still be a dangerous conspiracy theory like whether or not something is a conspiracy theory has more to do with the information you use to arrive at that conclusion than it does the actual veracity of the statement um sometimes total bullshit guesses end up being true so i still think it's important to critical the conspiracy theory for the same reason you want to promote scientific inquiry you have to filter good info from the bad um, a classified report that we don't have access to, um, which has been read by the FBI, has led them to say with low confidence that it was that it was probably a lab leak. They may or may not FBI, be F FBI's moderate confidence. The uh, Department of Energy or sorry, FBI's Department of Energy's but... low confidence. Yeah, the FBI's moderate. Yeah. If it, whether or not it ends up being true will be interesting in terms of future policy, but it doesn't really bear much fruit when it comes to like getting vaccinated or how to deal with COVID. It's, it's more of a like, but, 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 but it, that's my whole point of why, why I emailed you, like the messaging on it was either conspiracy theory or you're a racist and Trump didn't help with that. I'm not to be very clear. I'm not Trump was an idiot about all of this shit, but, um, by dismissing it out of hand, Fauci dismissing it out of hand, calling it conspiracy theory, all of the media calling it conspiracy theory, racist, and then now we're having the FBI saying moderate confidence. And if it comes out that it gets high confidence or proven, all of those people that you don't think exist on the fence about a lot of this stuff are going to get pushed the other way because it was so vitriolic about anybody who brought that up at any point. Well, to be fair, most of the time when people brought it up, it either was racist or conspiratorial in a way that is unproven. Like the idea that it was a bioweapon or deliberately leaked by China. Still commonly held conservative positions. And what's more, like at the time, um, there was no reason to believe that. The only evidence for the claim was like the disease started in China and there was a lab in China, question mark, question mark. They did research on novel coronavirus, which plenty of labs do around the world. Um, you know... Uh, we have to be careful with the processes here. I guess what I'm wondering is like, what do you think Fauci should have said? Like, it, like 
if there was no real evidence for that claim to begin with, should he have like shrugged and been like, anything's possible? Like, like how? Well, have you seen what he's doing now? Have you seen like his recent CNN interview or no, anything I didn't like see that? His recent interview. The, the gist of it was basically, I'm open to anything. Um, it seems like the evidence is moving that direction, but it could still be a natural origin. Um, I'd like to see the evidence, basically. Isn't that like, the gist of the messaging? Isn't that a very science-based answer? Yeah, and that should have been his answer in 2020. But then you would say that about everything. Like somebody might say, hey, did you know mRNA vaccines change your DNA? And he would be like, I don't believe that's true, but I'll wait to see the evidence. Like, you, I think it's okay. No, make... that's, not, that's, not, that's not a fair comparison. As you've stated in this conversation, mRNA vaccines have a better track record prior to 2020 of the research into the development of them. So Fauci, as the head of the NIH in, in the field for a long time, had pretty good evidence for to make an assumption that, hey, these are going to be safe and effective. Prior. What about what about the claim that it was a bioweapon? Like, should he, should he have been like, ah, well, could be, could not be, you know? No, because, I mean, he has access to the high levels of government, right? So we have pretty good intelligence. I've heard you talk about this he, in the context of the Chinese spy balloon. Hold on. You have heard you talk about this in the context of the Chinese spy balloon. We're all spying each, at each other at all times. If something like a bioweapon release was getting planned by the CCP, we might have some chatter on that, right? And something he would have some access to. He's not necessarily cleared for top secret intel or like anything national security briefing related outside of, of course, the, um, you know, the, 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 the overseeing of the pandemic as it exists. But even then, like, do you think, I don't, do you think, think he got no information from intelligence agencies on the origins early on? Like, Hey, there's some chatter in China in September, November of a respiratory virus going around Wuhan. Do you think he didn't hear anything about that? I mean, he, especially he, since he would get info on the disease. I don't think they would go to him, like giving him odds on the idea that it was a deliberate bioweapons leak. Okay. So, so maybe he's not the person to do the messaging on that. Maybe the, someone from the DOD or the Pentagon comes out and says, Hey, we have zero intelligence on this, but they wouldn't have, Fauci would be the one to talk about the possibilities of a lab leak once they found the fern cleavage site, the S1-S2 receptor, and the proposal from the Wuhan Institute of Virology in, what, 2019, that for basically a similar experiment to do a fern cleavage site between the S1 and 2 receptors in a bat coronavirus, like, he had that information, and he would, and that he'd be the person to do the messaging on that. Yeah, but, I mean, whether, and like, there is research on the novel coronavirus going on all over the place so i don't know if it's necessarily like it follows that because research like that was being done it thus means that there needs to have been a lab leak but i still feel no, like no, no. so a lot but, of well, I, but i just i want to ask because like i still i like we're talking about public messaging here right like um yeah. so one so one thing that would be his domain of expertise would be asking hey was this deliberately engineered by humans um and if if uh, like is was this made to be a weapon to hurt humans now my per personally i think that's bullshit i don't think that's true at all even if you believe it's a lab leak and you made the argument that it was a product of gain of function research that gain of function research could be done for reasons that aren't bioweapon in fact overwhelmingly that's why they're done to learn well, more I, about I disease so if somebody if, asks if i'm like, not making this clear i don't i don't think it's a bioweapon and i don't think it was intentionally released or like made to hurt humans. I think they were doing research into, I think it was gain of function as or if they want to call it, what was the other word? Chimera research or whatever, the four or five different things they've called but it. But if, if somebody asked were, him, like, was this manufactured to hurt people? Do you think he should have said that's a conspiracy theory? Or do you think he should have said, like, I don't know, like, we'll have to see where the research goes. Because I think it's important for people like Dr. Fauci, who are the, the, the avatars of this messaging, to not like, wish wash on questions that are so leading and so conspiracy driven like whether or not there's a lab leak when there wasn't really any evidence to support that case it's like okay well some well, people but, are but saying you can it's make a lab the leak. same argument for zoonotic there wasn't good evidence for that either and there still isn't for what a zoonotic transfer from I mean, animals well that was speculative i don't think people were like I don't, I don't think there was much like weight on the assumption of like, oh, well, where did this come from? Ah, well, here's a place it could have come from, you know, but there's well, much it was more bats, weight. And then it was penguins, then it was ferrets, then it was, they speculated as much as they wanted on zoonotic release, but they weren't allowed to speculate on a lab leak of an okay. accidental release, which we know happens. Can you understand why there would be a difference in terms of the responsibility of open speculation between 
which animal species it might have come from and whether or not the Chinese government's uh, irresponsible behavior directly led to the world's greatest pandemic of the past century. Like, maybe idle speculation on the latter might be a bit more irresponsible than the former. Maybe, but the research into prevention and the likely like evolution of the disease, if it is been, uh, what's the right word? If I say engineer, I'm going to sound like a crazy person who thinks it's a bioweapon. But if it has been worked with in a lab to increase its virality in humans, and that's going to affect the way that it mutates, that would be a good thing to look into early on as you're developing vaccines, as you're developing public policy, all of that. That would be important to look into early. No? Well, how do you, how do you look into that? We aren't privy to the, what the Wuhan labs, like day-by-day -day cleanup and processing procedures are like. Well, I'm pretty sure, what is it, Trump had a team that was set to go over there in 2020 and he couldn't pull it off because he's an idiot? Oh, right? well, the Chinese government would have, if they knew they were responsible, they would have cleared that shit up the day of. Like, the, the COVID got out months before 2020. They would have immediately cleaned the lab. We will never find direct evidence of, like, any... Like, like, like somebody saying like, oh yeah, well, I forgot to wash my hands after this. Or, I, I don't even know how a lab leak would happen because I know these labs are supposed to be like very secure. But if there was a f up, like people, people will be disappeared by the CCP before they give any info to America, like how that happened. Well, I think, I think they have been. I think there's a decent number of scientists in jail right now um, over shit like this, over questioning the CCP line on it. But it yeah, would be but very not, beneficial. Yeah, but not coming forward with evidence of a lab leak, because if they'd done that, they wouldn't have been arrested. They would have, like, fallen off a rooftop. Maybe. And we don't, I mean, I think we can both agree we don't have any good information out of town or the CCP on any of this. Well, we never will. Um, so I, I guess I, I, so I guess what we, I'm wondering we, is what the fuck is that we, report we, they're saying they read that is still classified? Well, this is the thing. We would have, if, if China was confident in zoonotic transfer, they would be telling everyone, right? Um, if they had they evidence have? of that, they no, they, they haven't shown any evidence. They've been saying it's likely, but they have zero evidence, so they can't prove it. If they had any sort of even high level circumstantial evidence, it would be all over the place, but it's not. But they how how do you how do you prove it? There's no way to find the first animal who transmitted to humans. That's not really We did it we did it with SARS and MERS. Yeah, but we can't do that here. That that's not a what? guaranteed process. China is huge. Like the, it's one animal out of out of out of millions in in a in a city or a, a wet market. I mean, sometimes well, we can, but not always. Likely, with from what I've seen of the bat populations in China, the the populations are pretty set in their flight patterns and where they're at. And they're not the bat that they have been speculating. I think. Don't hold me to this. I don't want to sound like I'm 100 percent confident in this, but from what I understand. There's not a bunch of bat caves near Wuhan. It's a few hundred miles away, and that's where they originally speculated that that bat would have been from that general region, right? And they yeah, haven't found anything there. By the time, by the time you decide on like a zoonotic um, uh, uh, like explanation, bat caves have hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of individual bats. They can fly to sure. other areas. Like I, the just the idea that you would be able to reliably track down the starting animal, I don't think is very. Is, is is very sound but we do know that bat population possessed rapidly mutating iterations of the coronavirus that we got infected with and that with very minor um uh, permutations of that covid strain it can infect humans because that's what the research found at the wuhan lab so if anything two bats could have like i don't know covid and then one of them just died over a wet meat market and then that was that you know like, it, 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 how would we ever even know that the disease was lab made? The, 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 the things you do in a lab to alter the COVID virus in that one paper they were doing, in the research they were doing, is also something that can happen in the wild. Right. But from what I understand, and again, very clear, not a virologist, not a scientist. So this is just how I'm receiving it. And that's why this concerns me, because the way I'm receiving messaging is like I watched the whole hearing, the Robert. Red, what's that, former CBC guy, Robert Redfield, and a few other people. The, the nature guy was a little out of his mind, but um, the other three seemed pretty reputable people in their fields. And um, his assessment early on was that it was a lab leak, right? So where's that messaging? So you've got someone who's running the CDC. Well, well based on what evidence? My, my, uh, 
I'd have to pull up his fucking well, yeah, testimony that, again. Ultimately, I don't think we're ever going to have a guaranteed answer to this because there's no way to trade. The only thing that could permanently settle this, and I mean permanently, would be some definitive evidence like a surveillance tape or a confession. I mean something that proved that there was a breach in um, lab containment protocol at the Wuhan lab at around the time or shortly before the virus got out. And I don't think we'd ever see that because the Chinese government would never let that blame be pinned on it. So we're, we're, I, I really want to know what's in the classified article that the FBI saw recently because I don't know what they could get at. The COVID strain, we know that they can naturally evolve to be infectious to humans. So there's nothing in the COVID strain that would suggest artificial tampering that couldn't be done naturally. I don't know what... I have no idea. I genuinely don't. I'm not. I'm not baiting or leading anything. I don't know how you no, can ever prove it one way or another. From from my understanding, just from listening to that testimony today, was that the fern cleavage site where it's at is strange. It's not typically like that. Is very unlikely for that to happen naturally. Have you seen evidence to the contrary of that for well, that specific thing? I can't provide contrary evidence to that claim. I know that we're talking about like millions of bats, and that unlikely things are likely to happen given enough permutations of an incident, right? Like, right, But, if, but if, if, your, if your argument for why Fauci had to vehemently oppose this early on is for clear public messaging, and it would have been irresponsible for him to say that, like, it seems, that seems silly. If, well, well if no, I, I, is... I, don't, I don't think that any public official should be even entertaining the idea unless it's, like, proven. Because the the whole like covid lab leak thing isn't an apolitical theory it's being pushed mostly by far right nuts to gin up like anti china war sentiment people who are saying that like fauci collaborated with the ccp to unleash a bioweapon to weaken american manufacturing like the the problem is like all of this is so politically weighted that i feel like you need to meet a really high standard of proof before you can even entertain this stuff yeah but if you go really hard against it and then at 3 years later it comes out that likely you helped fund it even if that was an acceptable way to do funding I, I watched you go through that the other day like even if that's all on the up and up about how they funded that lab through eco health lines or whatever it was um his avoidance of those questions his his insistence that it could not be a lab leak and then flipping three years later that is going to contribute to con messaging and it's going to contribute to people in the center which do exist that are vaccine hesitant or or it's going to reduce trust if it comes out that that's the most likely option and if all he had to do was just entertain the possibility early on and not be so insanely opposed to it especially when there's a likelihood he was at least semi-tied to that lab even if it's all fine even if it's all reasonable re reasons he's tied to that lab it's 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 easy to weaponize yeah, just and, keep in and, mind, there also would have been consequences to him being asked if it was a lab leak and him going like, I don't know, like that also would have had massive. So like we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place here. The, be the best example that I can think of here, like the best thing that I can think of is like, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to try to think of like a ridiculous example here um, that's still spicy because it's me. OK, let's OK, let's say like that there's a, a, a right wing conspiracy theory right after 9-11. Um, that right before the towers fell, a guy left. Um, and their evidence for this is that like there's kind of a blurry photo of somebody leaving one of the towers and he looks kind of like, I don't know, he looks kind of like sneaky. And then the conspiracy is like, this guy's a Jew. And he left because he, as a Jesus. Jewish person, knew about the towers falling beforehand. This isn't an exaggeration, by the way. The dancing Israelis thing is still like a really big like far right talking point, even though it's completely retarded. Um, now, now, now imagine this gets like really popular and to the point where like some people like New York officials, even like nationals, like, ah, how do you feel about this man leaving there? Uh, how do you feel about the claim that this man was a Jew and he was informed by blah, blah, blah. And like a politician in this position obviously would have to be like, what the f*** are you talking about? No, like stop this conspiracy bullshit. Anti-Semitism has no place in the world today. This is unacceptable. And then imagine like a while later through some like bizarro investigation shit, it was found out unbelievably that the guy's last name was Goldstein. It doesn't, he, he didn't do anything. He literally just left the building at a lucky time. That was it. He just, he just left, he just lucked out and didn't die that day. But it turns out his name was Goldstein. And now instantly it's like, mmm, interest. Everyone's like holding up the microphone. They're like, hey, hey, how do you feel about the fact that it's been proven that that man was, and it's like, 
And, and the problem is, there was actually no right answer there from the public officials, because the right thing to do from the beginning was to denounce it as an insane conspiracy theory. And the right thing now is to go like, well, okay, I mean, I guess he's Jewish, but that doesn't prove the rest of it. You know what I mean? It's not... It, in situations okay, where people right, are, like, like the, developing conspiratorial like the, logic. You know what I mean, though, right? Like, you understand what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, no, I do, but you're acting like the only people who were saying the lab leak was Brett Weinstein, Joe Rogan, and Robert Malone, I mean... but it was Robert Redfield who was the director of the CDC, like, and there was other scientists saying that. Well, he, so the, he went the back on what he said, though. Point, he went back on what he said during, what, the hearing two days ago? No, 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 like, like earlier on, right? Wasn't, or was, it, was it a different guy who speculated in the lab leak thing and then four days later during a press conference he said no? Or people were upset yeah. that internal documentation and showed he had concerns with Fauci, but then publicly he denied it. Yeah, that's a different guy. That's, okay, uh, okay, sorry, then I, I mixed them up, yeah. Um, no, but I, know what you're, but I know what you're talking about, and that's, again, another part of this. is like, well, internal, hey, you have people internally... Yeah, internal no, 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 doubts, but, public confidence. That's like a normal thing. But but did you th did they not think any of this was going to come out and they were going to get raked over the coals for oh, well, your but own guys? Or it's saying, a normal saying, thing. Hey, this is what I mean. Like, you keep saying, hey, didn't you know? Well, hey, didn't you know there's a possibility that guy would be found to be named Goldstein? Like, there's no right answer here. If you don't denounce the conspiracy to begin with, you give them a ton of fuel. And then if it turns out through sheer happenstance, an element of the conspiracy ends up being true. And it's like, well, ha, huh, pretty suspicious. You denied it. Well, yeah, there was an evidentiary standard that wasn't met to begin with, you know? Right, but they, they clearly didn't take the wind out of that conspiracy theory. They only fueled it, and this is fueling it more. And and the the left and the science community could have taken the narrative away from the conservatives and said, hey, there's no way this is a bioweapon. You guys are being ridiculous, like always. But it is possible that this could be a lab leak. It's something we should investigate, especially for... Um, policy moving forward on how exactly we treat this because if we find out that it is a lab leak we're, and it's been engineered there might be different ways to treat it like i, I don't get not a biologist but i the i guess but then then, I, I feel like people would just be like settling on the bioweapon thing to most conservatives the lab leak and bioweapon thing are like the same thing because they don't really believe yeah, it's what, a lab what, leak they think it was a weapon constructed by china that was released experimentally there and then not experimentally here you know Right, but weren't you saying earlier there's 24% of the country that's just unreachable and you don't give a shit about them? Well, I, I want them to be healthy and get vaccinated, but like, they're really making it difficult to care about their feelings on this well, issue. Well, hold on, that, that's, that's not my point, but you, that, you said that, there's, there's, there's a certain percentage, uh, and that's not small, unfortunately, that's just unreachable, right? I mean, yeah, on this issue, it seems so. Okay, but there's probably an equally large guys that could have gone either way on this, and could go either way on how they treat public health policy going forward. And if this continues to be, we were justified in everything we did. We didn't make any mistakes. Um, everything we said was 100% correct, even when we changed it. They're going to lose that percentage of people. And I'm talking about just normal people, man, the people I interact with every day at work, like just not crazy conservatives, just I don't think normal, normal people would refrain from getting the COVID vaccine because they think Dr. Fauci has secret ties to China that made him lie about the threat of a lab leak. This isn't like normal people stuff. This is Fox News stuff. I do you think, okay, I, I do want to dispel you because I do, I watch, sorry for the divergence, but I watch you quite a bit and they get a lot of good shit out of you. Do you think sometimes you tend to be in a bubble from where you live and where you grew up? No, well, I'm about to accuse you of that because what you're talking about is the bubble stuff. This is like Fox News bubble stuff. The vast majority of Americans do not care about any of this Wuhan lab lab leak bullshit. Um, these, I don't hear about it. I am, as we all are to an extent, in a bubble for sure. But when I hear about, yeah. when I hear about lab leaks or COVID stuff or the vaccine stuff, it is always from the right, never from the left. Because the left, this is a settled issue. On the left, it's like, yeah, COVID sucks, get the vaccine, try not to vomit on people's faces and get them sick. And on the right, every time you look at COVID stuff, it's like step 87 of Fauci's plan to Chinify America. And it's like, holy shit, maybe, maybe that is normal to some groups of people. And like, but if that's the case, anyone in that deep, I don't think Fauci's messaging would have changed things. It's not like Fox News would have got thrown their hands up and gone, ah, well, we're abandoning this culture war discourse that we've spent the past several years, you know, like committing to. Um, cause Dr. Fauci was slightly more ambivalent on the veracity of our conspiracy theory than he was otherwise. Like, I, I, I don't know how you can reach these people. They're, they're, they're crazy. Well, but this thing I could, I could, 
I, I understand what you're saying, but I've spent over the last three years, just by circumstance, I was in Southwest Florida, which if you know anything about that area is about as deep red as it can get anymore. They love DeSantis. Like it's, there was a grocery store by my house that used to have an 18 wheeler covered in Donald Trump, like, like a wrap every day. Like it's, it's an insane place. Right. Oh yeah. But then I've lived in, I've lived in Kansas city in that time. And I've lived in Denver in that time, which are all three of those places are wildly different. Right. And I'm a pretty social person. I spend a lot of time around a lot of different kinds of people. I work in a conservative industry, but I hang out in a very leftist like environment personally this isn't just a right wing like concern anymore. And people like my mother who I convinced to get vaccinated, she's not political. She's just like a 60 year old lady. You know what I mean? But she's w- weird about it. And her friends who are same as her, like then they're getting what weird is about the it. relationship between the lab leak idea and the vaccine? It's, it's see, for me, it's not one of these individual things I'm talking about collectively, like the, the assertion you make that it's insane and that the only people who could get wrapped up in this are too far gone, and the only people who could have any reasonable questioning of this are crazy on the right, yada, yada, yada. Like, that's not the case, man. And, like, my mom, who checks into the news once a week, remembers, oh, Trump said some racist shit about China in the lab, and then a couple years later, she sees, oh, they're having hearings about the lab leak. That's weird. Right? And, like, I know it's anecdotal, but, like, I, I think you're underestimating the middle section of okay, people. Okay, but the, the uh, point I'm trying to make is that this middle section is unreachable anyway because what we're looking at, like the, the, the number I'm looking at here is vaccine numbers, how many people are vaccinated. But there's no relationship between one's opinion on the veracity of the vaccine or like the effectiveness of the vaccine um, and the, the, the COVID lab leak theory that isn't connected by disinfo right-wing bullshit. There's no connection between these things at all. Uh, and that, like, to me, a person not getting the vaccine is proof that they cannot be reached through rational means. Um, they they are disconnected from all that. I don't think Fauci changing his his messaging on the lab leak earlier or on him, like, with the, the masks and stuff, I don't think it would change any of it. Because we're talking about, like, galactic mountains of bullshit that are stacked on top of it. For every one legitimate mistake made, a thousand imaginary ones have been made. And, like... In this environment, what I'm more concerned about really is just like destroying the right wing disinfo apparatuses that led them to feel that way, because that would be a far more effective way. If you really want to change people's minds on the vaccine, don't think of better ways to strategize stuff from the government. Think of ways to pull them away from Fox News, you know, like the more you can separate them from from the disinfo sources that they're they're connected to, the more likely they are to to have a correct answer. Okay, so along those lines, fine, I'll accept that that's what your goal, right? So I watched the clip you have where you go over Sanjay Gupta and Rogan, and you basically spent the majority of the time laughing at Rogan for being upset about the ivermectin thing and saying, good, I'm glad CNN called it horse dewormer, which I, the argument I'm making is, what's his listener base, like 11 million, 12 million per episode, something like that, like crazy? Do you think you're going to get any of those people to come along when he can show that they tinted his his video to make him look sicker and they called it horse warmer and then he can go on there and Sanjay Gupta can stumble over his words saying, I don't know why they lied. But do you think laughing at him and calling anybody who listens to that show an idiot is going to bring any of them around? It's 11 million people. I don't I don't know how on this issue, I don't know how I would bring people around other than making fun of them. I, I, I guess I'm bringing other people around when I do that. I don't know how else I'd bring them around. I could I could lie to them. That might work. Um, but I don't want to do that. So, well, it's just it's such a large population. Well, then how people. then how would I do it? You could. Hey, ivermectin has been proven at this point to not work, but calling it a horse. I've already, already lost them. Silly. Already lost them. It's gone. They they already don't give a shit about what I have to say. They're fully committed to ivermectin's miraculous healing properties. It's already lost. I'm being lynched how as we speak. Think, how do you think? How do I, I would assume your audience is what you're like four hundred and thirty. Thousand subscribers at this point. Yeah, thereabouts. I would assume. I would assume your audience, because uh, this is how I found you, didn't get there through leftist direction. I got to you through Tim Pool, right? Like I was trying to figure out my politics and all that, and like what I believed in, because I spent most of my early twenties not giving a shit, and I started to give a shit. So I was trying to figure out where to get good information from. 
And I don't have, I work 10 hours a day and fucking have a life and I'm not going to read 20 books a week. I'm just not going to do that. So I trial and error worked my way to better information over time. Right. But I've listened to a lot of Joe Rogan. I used to listen to Tim Pool. I didn't like Tim Pool that much, but that's how I found you. And you've brought me over on a bunch of issues. Right. Because I, I, I'm still finding my way politically. I still don't and, know everything that I believe. And to be fair, when I was on Tim Pool, I was making an effort to be appeasing, not appeasing, appealing to his audience. And if I went on Joe Rogan, I probably wouldn't just make fun of him for being short and dumb. Um, but the sure, but how are you ever going to get on? Like, okay, I don't know how much. Have you ever listened to a full Rogan episode or like anything like that? God, no. Okay, so that here's someone like you as you grow, just because I've listened to him since I was like 15, right? And like, yeah, he says a bunch of dumb shit sometimes, but also he has comedians on and, and scientists on and, and cool people on sometimes. So like, I don't think his show is without value, right? Um Someone like you is someone who could end up in his radar. Look at Kyle Kowalski, who I think you disagree with a lot, but you respect, right? Yeah, I respect him. Okay. Someone like you could probably end up on a show like that, his show or a similar show, in the next couple of years because you're getting large enough and you make very good points and you make dumb people look silly on a pretty regular basis. And if there's a scenario similar to the COVID pandemic that's important, you could give out messaging to his audience like you did on Tim Pool, but you'll never get there by shitting on him and his entire audience and calling him a grifter, which he's a lot of things and says a lot of dumb no, shit. It did, it did work you... with Tim, to be fair. It's not like I was very nice to him before I came on. Yeah, but Tim's a different... Like... Hey, yes, Tim, Tim's a different beast. I agree. No, I, I, don't, I don't disagree on that issue. I guess the, the problem that I have is that I, I, I hate the people who lie about COVID. I, desp I, just, I hate them. Very okay, much. but I guess the, I, I guess I, this would be my, my okay, question. For, I, like, no, no, you don't Joe, understand. I really hate them. Okay, uh, Joe Rogan do, in particular, I hate because he lied a lot. Um, do you think I, he's lying or do you think he's wrong? No, no, he's lying. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, and this was this came from people around him. He was really paranoid. Um, he would have his assistants wipe everything down with alcohol, like between every guest. Yeah. He was really, really sure. careful. And then he would go live and he would make fun of people for taking it too seriously. He'd make fun of people for wearing masks. Um, he would, he would like play down the severity of the thing. And that, that really bugs me, especially because have, I know you, why, just... I know why he was paranoid. It's because he's a steroids user and steroids can overtax a lot of the same organs that COVID ends up over. And I know for a fact that in his head, he's thinking, well, shit, I actually do have pre-existing conditions. I get to be careful. But for other people, eh, like, maybe they're taking it a bit too seriously. And that attitude is really pervasive in right-wing media when it comes to the callous disregard of other people's circumstance. My abortion is okay, but all of theirs are sinful, you know? My government bailout is okay, but all of theirs are greedy. That shit really bugs me. And he did it so callously and so overtly. And for a guy who comes off as so sincere, too. Like, I, he's not like a pundit, you know? Like, he comes across like the kind of person who would be just sort of like a, like a monkey honest you know but 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 it, it was such a such a dumb I, I thing. Curiosity, and, but you might be right you have a source on that that he was doing that i i could i would i would have to look it up it was like from someone near him and then i think like two other people validated it um it's like it's like joe rogan paranoid COVID. i i don't know i haven't seen the source in a long time it would take me a well, while. No, because the reason i'm asking is because i i was listening to him a lot in that time period right and so early on he had on somebody from the CDC, I forget his name, but he had on somebody from the CDC um, and was taking it really seriously. And then his position seemed to evolve over time. But, and you've made fun, I've heard you make fun of him for this. He listens to whatever the person in front of him is saying, right? So I, I don't know if, and maybe you're right, maybe he was doing that shit and I've got a bad read on him. But with an audience base that large and someone who seems sincere at least, and if, if that's a real source, that you can find or I'll look for it later, that would suck. Um, but for your messaging to bring over the largest audience in media, that's not the way to do it. I, I don't know how you could bring over that audience on that issue. I have, I have not really seen a successful approach on dealing with like the COVID spect uh, skeptic types. Um, to bring them well, over. Josh Zepps, Josh Zepps did a pretty good job on his show. Do you remember all those clips of everybody making fun of him when he had Josh on? I don't remember who that is. He's an Australian political pundit. Uh, whatever. It, Joe was bringing up some stuff about um, 
Oh, Rogan. Myocarditis in young boys, and Zeps had a bunch of studies, and then everybody clipped it and made fun of Rogan for two weeks. Um, Joe Rogan admits broadcaster Josh Zeps made him look dumb during vaccine debate. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I remember this. Um, yeah, so like, his audience is not unpliable to that kind of thing, I don't think. Well, <laughs> did, okay, but did it change their behavior? That I don't I don't know. I've noticed this is a trend with people like Joe Rogan as well, where because it's mostly a personality cult, like they're there because Joe sure. Rogan is like the funny haha guy and he has people on, but like it's framed around Joe Rogan's interviewing talents, which he has plenty of. Um yeah. and, and his kind of like buffoonish charm. Um and like him getting I, I feel like oftentimes when he says something dumb, it's like people like laughing at him, even from his audience. But I don't know if that like I mean, well, okay. Does that uh, did that change uh, the, the the equation there? Because he because he'll just well, say anything, right? Like maybe, but like uh, just as a separate example from COVID. But like, what would you assume Joe Rogan's audience's opinion in general, like the average, would be on like Israel or war stuff? War stuff. Um, probably pretty non-interventionist. Probably pretty isolationist. Okay. Because when I started listening to him, I was what, probably 16 and grew up in Kansas and did no goddamn thing. Um, and my first exposure to Israel being bad and they're like all the Palestinian shit was Abby Martin. And I would have never found that person otherwise, right? I would have, I would have, I would have, I, I might have learned that five, six years later. I wouldn't have known anything about Israel or their policies or how fucked up it is, right? But he had on a super leftist anti war person. But I don't know, when you call, I don't know. Maybe that shit's true, but ask Kyle Kalinsky. You have you guys talk regularly. See what he thinks. Because I I, I think calling that big of an audience that it is a cult of personality that loves him and gets a lot of their information from their grifters, but sometimes they find their way to you is not a productive way to do that because you're going to turn off people immediately. And and that's that audience is not super partisan either direction. They're pretty pliable in the middle people. Well, they're pliable on that, some that stuff. Would... One thing that they're not pliable on is like institutional trust. Joe Rogan audiences are pretty pliable on a lot of issues, but it's really difficult to burn out of them this like reflexive, dumb um, distrust for people in power telling them what to do, which unfortunately is kind of the situation here because we're talking we're talking about Dr. Fauci, right? I don't I don't think that I don't think you could get like I, like I think I could convince a Joe Rogan viewer to be pro or anti-Israel, pro or anti-BLM, pro or anti-transgender people or whatever. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could get them to trust like the U.S. government on healthcare policy. I feel like I'd have a harder time convincing a Joe Rogan fan to be in favor of like welfare state tax rates than I would like convincing them that Jews did 9-11. I have no idea. They have a bias towards conspiracism uh, and believing the last thing they heard, which is fitting given what they're watching. I don't disagree with your broader point. I, I, I agree that, okay, being fully charitable, I agree that oftentimes my, um, my belief that a lot of these COVID skeptic types can't be reached has led me to be kind of willfully unproductive um, on, on their issues. Like I recently, just the other day, had on a, a, a transphobe who's like one of those... Um, trans kids will not be trans if you don't groom them into staying trans kind of types used to work unless this daily was the wire. daily wire person i don't know if i saw that. the daily wire person yeah yeah the daily wire lady. okay yeah and i was perfectly capable of being conciliatory with her at least in the sense that i could try to structure my arguments in a way that would well, work with her but i don't it, know how it to seemed like you read her skeptic people sure but i i just think you're wrong like i i think correct me if i'm wrong but the way you read her during that interview was hey some of this stuff with the diagnoses is pretty personal to her. And if I attack her really hard on the transphobic shit, she's going to shut down and this isn't going to be a productive conversation. She doesn't seem like someone who's willing to argue heavily or stream or go back and forth. And the only way to get anything positive out of this, especially since she's in the news so heavily for publicly leaving the Daily Wire for their messaging on transgenderism policy, even though she's not the best on it, it would be a bad strategy to berate her for being an idiot. Am I wrong about that? Um, yeah, if I was just directly talking to her, berating her for being an idiot would be a pretty dumb idea. Um, if I was watching content of her, so it's different. If I went on Joe Rogan's podcast, I wouldn't just berate him for being an idiot, unless things went really badly. 
watching him, I'm more willing to do that. I don't even berate Tim Pool for being an idiot when I'm talking to him directly. Because when you're talking to them directly, you have their audience and there's like a more direct back and forth. If 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 a person's saying some, something really dumb in like a pre-recorded video that you're responding to, you can't keep them from saying the dumb things. You can only react to it. Whereas you can say, well, what do you mean by that when you're talking to them in person? So the strategies differ there. Um, but it's just that I've just never had any luck with the COVID skeptic stuff. It's just been such an information black hole. I honestly kind of hate covering anything COVID related because I felt like for a long time, it's the one issue on this channel where I will never make another fan. Like I'll never convince anyone of a position they didn't hold beforehand. The most I can do is give new arguments to people who already agreed with me. I guess, but I think it's probably the thing you and I disagree on the most. And I've become a bigger fan of you over time over the last few years. But I haven't moved you right. on this position. It's other positions, maybe, that you came over on, right? Uh, I, over is probably the wrong word. And more informed. Yeah. Over a little bit on certain things, but more informed. I'm still, like, I think the biggest disagreement we would have on almost anything is just the level of authority we're comfortable with with the government. And, and that would probably be the biggest, like, and this is kind of where it stems from. Um, that would probably be our biggest disagreement on anything, really. Um, I just, I don't know why, I don't know where you get your faith in those institutions. I know where you get your faith in science. I just don't know where you get your faith in those institutions to use that shit responsibly, because a lot of your other positions don't seem to line up with you trusting them on shit. Um, sure, okay, I'll let you know. It's not faith, it's uh, critical analysis. So the state benefits from the health of the population. Um, no government in all of human history has benefited from plague within its borders. There's a lot of like sci-fi dystopia, like, you know, skepticism on the idea that, well, maybe one day the deliberate release of a pandemic, like that's a plot in Deus Ex. But in reality, it never actually pans out that way. Because as much social control as you may be able to exert in the United States off of like um, disease prevention as a pretext, and, and, you know, so far for that one, right? Like China did, sure, but they were already a dictatorship. In the United States, we got like, what, a couple months of s s like spurious lockdowns in some states? Uh, do, what, like the government clearly did not use this as an opportunity to exert total federal control. Um, they said the same stuff about like FEMA camps, you know, back when, when Hurricane Kat uh, Katrina hit and, and, you know, obviously nothing came of that either. What were we saying? Well, along those along those lines of obviously they didn't do anything near what China did. Do you think they would have enforced the vaccine like vaccine passports if they could have gotten away with it? Because they, they were never going to. But it was, it seems like there was a hard push to get that done federally. Am I wrong? Um, I wouldn't be necessarily opposed to it. I mean, I'm kind of okay with the idea of mandatory voting. So the idea of mandatory vaccines. We already do this sort of, right? Like we already do this with um, like the polio vaccine. Your kids can't go to school unless they take it. That's a good thing. Um, so it seems like that would just be adding the COVID vaccine in line with pre-existing vaccines. The only issue, of course, is that you only have to take like a set number of polio vaccines or whatever. Whereas with COVID-19, it's an ongoing pandemic and the, the strains are still evolving. There's not a new form of polio, right? Like it's polio. Whereas... Um, you know, COVID-19 10 years from now, there might be a totally separate set of policies. So it's kind of hard to enforce anything universal like that. I, I, there are risks of government overreach, but the thing is like all the overreach there is being done in the name of genuinely trying to curtail the virus, right? Um, okay, not, not, not all of it. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Some, some of the easiest to cherry pick, and I'm, I am saying cherry pick clips, are like them arresting a solo paddle border in California. That's insane. Or Gavin yeah, Newsom going to the French Arrest laundry without a mask and it, being outside your COVID policy. Well, if or, or filling in, the, filling in the skate parks, or Newsom at the French laundry, or the British prime minister having a party during COVID. Rules for thee, not for me. That kind of shit. Well, wait, wait, wait. If if they broke, if they broke the rules on the like which areas are closed off then that is still legislation that is being made with the intent of like the, the government isn't like expanding an authoritarian agenda by keeping people from going to skate parks the, the government doesn't become more powerful when it does that it doesn't enhance its ability to oversee our lives it doesn't it all it does is cost the government money the government loses money the more lockdown goes on, the less economic activity takes place. I don't think any right. government does this stuff 
like out of like like haha you know like the more we control them the stronger we get and uh, in in reality it's the opposite the chinese government right now is is the weakest it's been in decades since um since deng at least because like there's so much instability with covid and people hated zero the the zero covid policy and now people just get dumped on the streets and covid is running rampant like there's you know even in a totalitarian country like there's there's still no benefit to weaponizing a, a, a pandemic against your own population it just doesn't work it's bad business literally like it, it shuts everything sure, down do, right? do, do, do you think let's say three years from now in covid's calmed down or the variants got it to a place where it's no longer super whatever whatever happens right it's just less dangerous in three years do you think the CCP is going to relinquish new surveillance measures they put in for it new phone apps do you think they're going to relinquish any of that or do you think they're going to keep it um, well, th they'll take any chance they can get to up their surveillance. But one, they were doing that before but, COVID. Like that. Right, but you don't think we, we would do the same here? I mean, the, we saw the Patriot Act, right? Yeah, but that wasn't COVID. No, no, but what I'm saying is that was supposed to be a temporary measure to protect American citizens. Yeah, but right? I'm, that not, the, that was the, I'm not defending that was the, the expansion of a surveillance state. I'm just talking about COVID lockdown stuff. If, if, right, but would you, would you, would you have, ex would you have, advocated for vaccine passports like the cell app on your phone in new york um during an ongoing pandemic yeah i think i'm okay with that because the the okay. end goal of that the only like the end status of that is just like you have to be vaccinated all right but how do you now that's implemented that's a policy the government can enforce do you think it's ever going away do you think they might expand it like they've expanded the picture okay, so you the, actually the trust problem, the federal government to not do shitty things with that the the problem that i have with this is that this is ultimately like an argument against all forms of federal or state power which i don't agree with um i think the state can do a lot of good because state oppression is not the only oppression you're capable of experiencing there's corporate oppression sure but there's also natural oppression and natural oppression would be like an inability to access the basic stuff that you need to live. The availability of water and food freely is a freedom from natural tyranny. You know, like you can dump a person out in the middle of the woods with no clothing, no food, no water, free from the law. And they are free in a legalistic sense, but they will be dead soon. So they weren't free from other things. The government can protect us from natural inequality, natural oppression, one of which being pandemic. So I'm willing to accept some concessions when it comes to federal power if it protects us from other kinds of unfreedom. Um, now, obviously, like what's acceptable there has to be done kind of on a case by case. Like, OK, does this actually help with the pandemic? Like, is this dangerous in the long term? I would not accept the government expanding this like massive surveillance policy if it um, if they were like, hi, yeah, this will fix COVID or whatever. But I just don't think that's what we've seen. Um, the federal government in here in the United States is weak and impotent. It can't get anything done. Uh, the closest thing we have right now to the expansion of a security apparatus to um, detain the population or like keep them under control is happening right now in Florida under DeSantis, where he's arresting oh, reporters who speak out against him. His 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 legislators are um, saying that bloggers and reporters who write on DeSantis have to be um, registered with the state. Uh, where he's putting um, like Disney under like Disneyland under state control because he doesn't like how Disney like questioned him on the don't say gay bill like that right there. Those are examples of a state legitimately expanding their power. And I, I care about yeah. those things. I just I, I just don't want the pandemic to happen forever. You know, well, I, I guess what's frustrating for me is you, you understand part of the reason I left Florida was because of things like that. I liked where I lived, but that place was becoming insane. Right. Um, it wasn't the only motivating factor, but it didn't hurt. The, it, did, it didn't eat me there at all. Um, you seem OK. Like. Uh, we both agree on the DeSantis shit. It's terrible, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you would be OK. Like, I think you would be making an opposite argument if this was something that you didn't. Mm -hmm. it, it, it seems like you're only OK with this level of author authority from the federal government because it's something you agree with, Paul? Well, like, yeah, I'm I'm okay with things if I agree with them generally. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm I'm not saying this very well. Um, I worry about any sort of power given to the federal government that you wouldn't want to apply in the opposite direction if you didn't agree with it. I guess. Yeah. Well, it's you know, there's a lot of nuance to the expansion of powers like stuff. Um, I mean, for example, like taxes. Right. I support the existence of taxes. I want taxes to be higher than they are now. Um, 
But at the same time, I recognize that overwhelmingly tax dollars go towards stuff that I disagree with. I disagree with the management of basically every element of our state expenditure. Um, and I disagree like in, in totality with like the military expenses, uh, police department, you know, all that crap. Um, but I still advocate for taxes because I don't, I, I think they're necessary. They also free us from natural inequality um, if used well. So it's, it's just a matter of like how this is applied. But in practice, we must accept that the COVID lockdowns did not actually lead to an expansion of federal power, nor did any of the FEMA like emergency relief stuff after Katrina or, um, or any of the stuff that like people tend to fear monger over because the real increase in federal power oversight and surveillance, generally speaking, not stuff conservatives care about because they're usually the ones doing it. Um, the Patriot Act was bipartisan, but up to this point now still maybe disproportionately toted by concern actually no man that might be fully bipartisan at the very least the desantis stuff is is purely um partisan yeah but like okay that's a, the picture is a great example you don't think the left has gotten really bad on war these days like from where they used to be uh, well, the, I mean, not the left, the left i think the left, they like need to be more democrats more pro-war if anything well, what do you what do you mean pro-war which war? i know you're pro ukraine but like yemen like the vote on syria this last week um, I mean, just pretty much mil military intervention in any way that has never gone well for us. Um, well, military invention, uh, 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 intervention does go well for us sometimes, but yeah, I, I mean, I think that the Democrats and the Republicans are broadly pro intervention. I mean, the only people who aren't are like the hardliner left and right sides who are more isolationist. I don't think that that's really changed though. I mean, the support for the Iraq war was basically just total back when it started, right? Right, but are you not surprised? What was it, two hundred something to a hundred to continue funding in Syria for that war? We Bernie Sanders of all people crushed the Yemen bill with um, because Biden promised him he would work on it. Um, well, it doesn't surprise me that much. I mean, it seems okay, like a continuation of existing policy. Biden has dropped drone strikes quite a bit since his term began, though, so there has been an improvement. Yeah, sure. That's, and I guess it's, <laughs> I don't see that as a good enough improvement, right? Like Trump didn't start any new wars, but he wasn't good on military intervention, right? There wasn't any new specific, like adding troops anywhere, but he was still dropping insane amounts of drone bombs. That doesn't, he's not better because he didn't start a new war. Um, yeah, but, but I'm not, I'm not defending like liberal Democrats here or anything. Uh, you know, obviously the United States has a lot of bad geopolitical stuff, but of what relevance that is that to the left? Like the left tends to vote against this stuff, you know? I honestly lost track of how we got there, to be honest with you. Um, it was probably something along the lines of um, you being comfortable with the government, like exercising its authority and not overdoing it on COVID policy. I don't know how exactly we got to war shit. I, I apologize. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um Yeah, I, I, I think I can I think I can see some good arguments on continuing to maintain US troop presence in Syria. Um after all, like Rojava is there and we could potentially like protect the Kurds because our presence there makes it less likely that Turkey en engages in like a full on invasion to their south. There might potentially be some benefit in maintaining our presence there. I don't know. When when have we effectively protected the Kurds and actually honored our promises to them? Ever? Well, I mean, our presence in Syria is basically the only reason Rojava was able to sustain itself, has been able to sustain itself for as long as it has, right? It's Right, but know. do you think if it becomes economically disadvantaged or geopolitically disadvantaged, do you not think we'll throw the Kurds in the trash can just like we do every time? Well, we did with Trump, yeah. We, the, he, he ordered a pullout from Syria um, and kind of throw them to the wolves there. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not saying we're good allies to the Kurds, but we are allies to them. And hopefully our presence there could do some good or help secure some kind of um, long-standing presence that Turkey can't actually interfere with after we, uh, after we leave. The stuff in Syria is complicated. We do a lot of bad stuff, like, abroad. Um, the Syria situation is really, really, really complicated. I don't know. Yeah, sure. The Yemen is the one I care about the most, honestly. Yeah, that's probably um, good. We could end that to, to a point. I mean, we could stop stop providing tires for the jets and shut that down entirely, but we don't. And I still don't know how we got here. Um, 
kind of lost the plot a little bit, but um, I don't know, man. I, I just, I guess, I think the messaging, you're pushing a lot of people away. You could bring in, and I think I'm a pretty good example of that on a lot of things. Um, and I think the discussions I've had with people in my life that have gotten them vaccinated or gotten them to take, at least take it more seriously, get my 65-year-old father to take vitamin D and exercise and go out in the sun. And get his uh, bivalent booster. We all got to be responsible now. Yeah, he's not doing that at this point. Um, mm, I don't know. And that's what I'm saying. He, he has lost the ability to listen to me on any kind of, anything like this. Maybe you and, should uh, show him this stream. Maybe that'll be enough to get him over. Oh, God. I, I think... <laughs> I, I agree. Think I think we'll be a good is... idea. Okay, I'll try. I'll see, if, uh, I'll see if he can do it next time he's fucking... He turns off Fox News. But... I actually asked because I knew this was happening and I actually asked him about it. Like, why have you moved from happy to get it to I'm not getting any boosters and I regret seeing it. And yeah, it's too much conservative media, but they've Fauci and Leanna Wen and 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 they've given right wing media too many wins to work with that are easy, easily like manipulable and they don't have really like that. He doesn't have a leg to stand on on how far he pushed against the lab leak, especially now. Like it just doesn't, and that's okay. I, I, I and I understood your argument for why you think he did that, but I think it was a silly strategy. And I think yelling and screaming at anybody who doesn't agree with you on this is a good way to. Well, I don't think Fauci has. Trust. I don't think Fauci has yelled at or screamed at anybody on the subject. I don't know the the him and the Rand Paul hearings were pretty like disrespectful from both ends well yeah he was being asked some pretty f dumb questions in the rand paul here i i would also be disrespectful if rand paul deigned to talk to me if i if if my holy presence was besmirched with the presence of rand f paul i would also be pretty you know ornery about it um All right, but this is what i mean you don't think about your priors of course you don't respect that person in any way and but Fauci doesn't get that luxury he's a public health Message, but he's well, he, like you said, he is the guy doing public health messaging. He has yeah, to be he's better just, than you and I. He's not a politician. He's like a ninety-five-year-old scientist. I, I guess. Yeah, and he's been he, he's I, been in politics for what forty years. He he didn't like there this was is similar. This is definitely the most political scrutiny he's ever been under. He's like he's like a million years old. He spent his entire life researching this stuff. Um, and and you, you know, policy is, adjacent you, to it. You think this is that much different than? The AIDS stuff when there was people in the streets with Fauci pinatas. Wait, but then the what? The, he, he was part of public health policy during the AIDS crisis, and there was lots of like yeah. But wait, okay, I could be I could that. be totally misremembering, but I feel like his his presence there got heavily de-emphasized, right? Largely because Reagan like had the CDC not um, like even comment on it. So like afterward, like I think a lot of his presence there was like the 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 Reaganites just wanted the CDC to shut the fuck up, and, and, and Fauci was seen, like, potentially as a kind of, like, icon of, of, of heroism or, or of assistance to a lot of gay people or HIV-stricken people, but I don't know how much, like, political scrutiny he got. I could, I, I could be wrong on this, because I don't actually know that much about what happened after the Reagan administration opened up more research on HIV, and, like, what the fallout was from taking it more seriously. I, I could look into that. I might be wrong. I admit that I could be totally wrong on this. I don't know much about the yeah, I mean, after. I'm not, oh, that's what it was. It was AZT. Fauci was like very, he pushed AZT a lot. That was it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look more, more into it. Um, well, all I'm saying is it's not like this was his first rodeo. That's what I'm saying. He is, he's been in that position for a long time. He's had to go through public health crises before. So giving him the, well, you know, it was a tough one. That's not good enough for someone in that position. I, okay, to but, I, I just think it's, it's important to understand that when you have people like Rand Paul um, fielding these questions, it, like everything is f to begin with, right? Like, he, like Rand Paul, like all conservatives, are bad faith interlocutors on this issue. You know, they are literally paid. They have to form lockstep with the party on this issue. And in this environment, like, I feel like a, a degree of blame can be alleviated just for the fact that Rand Paul was such a... during that conversation. 
All right, but this is what I'm saying. You're taking your priors from this and applying it to how you react. And like, I would assume your chat is a simple, and most of the people in your audience are similar. Well, like, of course, fuck that guy. But like, uh, most people aren't political or they're conservative. Like, not you. I've heard you say this a hundred times. The left isn't that big. The real left, the one you care about, not that big a group of people, right? So they don't receive that interaction the same way that you do. They see a public health official yelling at a senator and that's not what if you if you and if you're i feel i feel like that's a very selective way of framing the clash between them well no but it it goes the same way with like Rand paul didn't look good in that interaction they both look like children and this is what i'm saying like it's when the arguments that of cnn or fauci or whatever is not Hey, we understand how you got here. Let me explain how you're wrong. But haha, silly bitch taking horse dewormer or Rand Paul. You're not, it's not good messaging. It's not helping anybody. It's not getting anybody. Okay. The people who okay, I'm, laugh with you on fuck Rand Paul already agree with you. Okay. I just, the problem that I have here is that I feel like that the, the level of scrutiny, that, first of all, I don't know why we're talking about like Fauci's perfection when I'm not arguing that he's perfect. The problem here is that no pandemic response will ever meet the standards being set here. You're, it's completely skewed. You have an insane far-right disinfo propaganda machine that lies about everything and has like multi-billion dollar um, media structures capable of regurgitating those lies to a massive audience. And then it's like, okay, now handle a record pandemic, the largest in a century, good luck. And if you ever say anything, if you say something truthful, they'll say you're lying. If you say something untruthful, they'll say you're lying. If you change your mind on anything because the information has changed, they will talk about it for years. There's, if you ever raise your voice even a little bit, like that'll be, you know, it's, it's like if, you, if you're a 95 year old national hero, like um, virologist guy, like gets a little testy while being asked a bevel of bad faith questions from a propagandist, then we'll remember that. And it's like, okay, well, nothing will ever meet the standard. I agree that it's, it would be perfect if we were perfect, but in the environment we're in right now, like, if Fauci had been perfect and like super responsive and calm during that conversation with Rand Paul, the far right would still have everyone believing that, you know, Rand lied about his connections with China and he's trying to cover up for the bioweapon he helped engineer. I just don't think there's a way around this outside of the abolition of the conservative media to begin with. Like that, for, that's the thing I want to focus on because I genuinely do not know how much of a margin we're fighting over here, right? I don't know who the guy is who consumes far-right propaganda 24-7, but then saw Fauci be okay one time. And then, and then he was like, okay, you know? Right, but I'm not talking about the consumes Fox News and OAN all day. Person. Like, that's not... I think we've both kind of gotten to a point where we agree like there is a section of the population that's not reachable. I think you just really underestimate the section that is reachable. I don't, I don't think the, the messenger censor cares about this. I, okay. I mean, we, we're not going to... We just don't agree on that. And that's okay. Um, I just think if someone stumbles into your content and this is something they care about and they look up anything covid Bosch, all it is... But like, what would I just, say to convince them? I don't know. You, the way you've spoken to me in this entire conversation... All very good. There's stuff I want to look into now. You know what I mean? Um, But you don't speak like that to when you're just talking about COVID. You just talk like everybody who doesn't agree with you on this issue is an idiot. And that's that's not true. But I've been saying that here, too. And you aren't going to change your mind after this convo. So it, it, I, can't, I can't, I can't move people over. It's like talking about abortion, right? I'll never bring somebody over talking about abortion. People have very strong feelings on it. And it's just not, it's not something empirics weighs in on. The, the vaccine stuff, it is an empirics based thing, unlike the abortion stuff. But it's just people have, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, okay. Um, I, I'm sorry. No, I, 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 no I, I, I don't mean to be specific. It's just we've been talking about this for two hours, and I feel like my long-suffering yeah. community could probably benefit from a nice, relaxing being told that I'm ending stream early. So I have to go and do that to their disappointment. That's okay. I, I genuinely appreciate you talking. Seriously. No, but, I, I, genu- um, I enjoyed the conversation very much. I really did. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much. Hope the cat's doing better, and uh, have a good night. Yeah, get your bivalent uh, booster for your dad, okay? Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best. I wouldn't sleep. 
Okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. Be well. I enjoyed that conversation, but I really don't think I'll ever be able to move anyone over on this issue. Ah! I don't know what to do. I can't put myself in the mindset. I can put myself in the mindset of somebody who thinks abortion is murder. I disagree, but it's 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 an axiomatic like it's 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 a it's a normative thing. It's it will, well, okay, it's define personhood, okay? I I understand. I disagree, but I understand. But I don't with the with the vaccine stuff. It's like um I I guess the, the problem is that dude is too dense. No, I'm not talking about that dude. That it's it's not that guy. That guy got the COVID vaccine. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the people who won't get the COVID vaccine. Because past a point, we're just talking about like anti-empiricism. I I mean, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It could just be I'm like totally wrong on this. A bunch of people were able to get a ton of support. Fuck no, man. A ton of people made their careers being vaccine deniers. Who made their career being an anti-vaccine denier? There's got to be somebody, right? I think that's it. A lot of people, like literally hundreds of people, became prominent media personalities because they were um, opposing the vaccine stuff, opposing the COVID narrative, being conspira conspiratorial. Um, but, but... Who made their career on the other side of things? Somebody who was unknown but rose up because they were so effectively promoting vaccines and Fauci and stuff. I don't know if anyone did. I don't know if there's a market in that. God, that's so fucking annoying. Anti-conspiracy content, it will never be as popular as conspiracy content because people who are susceptible to conspiracies can be roped in and made like really loyal viewers. See Jimmy Dore exploding when he became anti-vax. Um, but anti-conspiracism doesn't have that much of a market outside of the broader, like, um, debate smart guy market, you know? But, like, there's not, there's not a market of people looking for content to disprove conspiracies in the same way that there is the other side of things. And people who are looking to disprove conspiracies already don't believe in the conspiracies. Nobody's out there looking for debunks of anti-vax info who isn't already not anti-vax. There's no, like all those people, all they're looking for are better arguments to support their pre-existing position. You're not changing anyone's mind. Ugh.